Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and this is part 23 of our Unity series on creating a point-and-click adventure game. So in our last video, we um, created our usable item system where we can actually see items that we're picking up and carrying. Now we're going to look at how to make it so that we can actually take those items and interact with our world um, using those items. So they're not just kind of a window dressing, we're actually able to make them part of our puzzles and part of our um, systems. Um, some obvious ideas of this might be that there's a lock that you requires that you have a key in order to open it or maybe a machine that needs a specific part in order to get it running again. So let's start by jumping into our prerequisite script in Mono Develop. Can maximize this. And so right now in our prerequisite script I've got a couple of comments here I've added in. First one is saying public switcher, watch switcher, meaning that we are watching a switcher interactable to see if it's true or false, and if it is, then um, it will return as complete or not. Um, and the second one we have is this rule saying node access, meaning that if it's, if it's not complete, then don't allow access to this node. So we're going to add a little bit more, a couple more variables here. And the first one's going to be a new bool. We're going to call this public bool um, require item. And so basically what this is going to be is if, if we met set this to true, um, if true, check for item instead. And then lastly, we're going to add another variable. We're going to call this one public collector, oh, no, not abstract collector, public collector um, check collector. So if require item is true, we'll check this collector. So what does all this mean? Basically, um, this would probably be better served as like an enum that has a switcher option and an item option, but I'm just doing a bool right now because it's um, simpler and we don't have to get into enums and that whole concept. Basically it's saying if we check this off then instead of looking for a switcher we're actually going to look at a collector and check that we have the same item that it has. And then this is the collector that is saying if we're requiring an item this is the collector to check. Now, obviously, it's not doing any of this right now. We need to do that inside of our complete function here. So I can actually comment this to check if prerequisite is met. So right now, it's we're doing something very simple here. We're simply saying if we, um, when we check if it's complete, simply check the watch switcher and check its state right here. Uh, we want to get a little bit more complex with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple, we're going to add an if statement here. And we're going to say first off if not require item. So if we're not requiring an item that means that we're just watching the switcher. So if not require item then we can actually just return that watch switcher state. However, if we are requiring an item, then we need to check um, that what the player is holding is the same thing as the item held by the particular collector that we're interested in. And the reason I'm doing it this way, it would probably make sense in the long run to um, check the actual item itself. But right now our items are, um, they're just really data. And we're, we don't have a way of storing that data, so there's not an easy way to just take the item from the collector and put it in here. So I'm just going to take the entire collector wholesale, put it in here, and then we'll check the item that it is holding for us. So if else, meaning if require item, then what we're going to do, um, let me double check here and go back into our game manager, because that's where we're holding our items. Uh, public item, item held is what we called it. So we can quickly just say game manager dot ints dot item held and we could do it as item held but there's a risk that oh, game manager not manger there is a risk 
that when we create the item, um, when we're making the item and populating it into item held, that it's making a copy of it and it's not exactly the same item. So I'm actually going to go one step further and say item held dot item name, which is a string. And a string, if it's the exact same string, will be the will be that string no matter what. So that's kind of like almost like saying checking two ints against each other. One is always one is always one no matter where it is in the, in the game. So that's kind of what we're doing here. And what we want to check is if that is equal to check collector dot what did we call it? Did we just call it my item dot item name? So we're checking those two strings against each other. And actually we want to check whether they're equal to each other and we can simply return that. Because if they are equal to each other this will return true meaning it's complete and if they're not the same it will return false meaning it's not complete. So that's all we really need to do here. And now we're saying um, as long as we check require item we can um, double check if the item we're holding is the same as the item in the collector that we're referencing. So let's put this into practice in the Unity Inspector. Jump over and right now we've got our item is currently, if we go into our room, I believe go to the table, the red sphere holds the item. And right now how we're doing this is we have to go over to the can activate the can with the, because of this prerequisite and then we can get the collector. So I'm going to get rid of this prerequisite because I want to be able to walk right up to this table and get this item which we're calling the gold key. So that's all good right now. Right now we can start our game it should be, let's hit play and try it. Always better to check. Go right up here to our sphere, click it, now we're holding the gold key. Perfect. So now what I want to do is I want to go over to that can. So let's go to the corner box, uh, can prop is the item I can focus on it in here. Make this not 2D any, whoops, make this not 2D anymore. So there's our can. And our can right now is just simply a switcher but I want to add a prerequisite to this switcher. And this prerequisite um, is not going to be the watch switcher ones that we've been doing all this time. Instead I'm going to say require an item and now um, we're going to want to check collector. So which, which collector are we checking against? We're going to check against that red sphere. So if I drop that in there because it's a collector, uh, falls in nicely and we'll, we don't need node access. Um, you can still walk up to the can even if you don't have the gold key. It just won't do anything. So now what we should be able to do is save this. And if I hit play, and I look around over to this can, and I try to go over to the can, I click at the can, you see here the switcher and the box collider aren't activating. And that's because I'm not holding the gold key. So I can click and click and nothing happens. But if I back out, uh, go over here, now I go to the sphere and I get myself the gold key, which we're seeing up here. I have the gold key now. I can back up, go back around the level here. And now if I go here, I'm holding the gold key. So my item held is, actually if we go to game manager, no, I'm hiding that in the inspector so we can't see it. But I'm holding the gold key. It's going to check the name of the gold key I'm holding against the name of the item. Um, being held by the red sphere, which is the gold key. So when I click this now, it should just activate and change color and turn on. And sure enough, it does. So now we're able to go back this way. Uh, oops, got to zoom out there. And then go to the cube, which the, finally the cube here, if we look again, now has the requirement that the um, can prop be on, which it is because we kind of set this one to also kind of be a little reminder for us. And so now if I click here, we can observe, we can finally observe the blue cube. So that's really the basics of creating the item system where you have an item that you can pick up, you can carry it, and then you can actually track using other, using other nodes whether or not you're carrying that item. Um, you can obviously, like I say again, add more items to your inventory. You may still want to specify though that you're currently using a specific item. For example, you can't just have a bunch of keys in your backpack and try them all on the door, you have to be holding the right one for the door to open, that sort of idea. Um, but yeah, this is, like I say, again, a very rudimentary way of building this item system um, so that you can 
really get that extra layer of interactivity where you're not just interacting with one given node at a time, but something you do at one node or an item you get at one node might affect something further down the line for you. Um, now, there's a lot of, obviously, um, error checking that's not being done in this system right now. I was trying to um, keep this fairly brief in terms of, for example, when you are requiring an item, you should probably be confirming that the check collector actually has a um, has an object in it, where and vice versa when it's not that you're checking the watch switcher and things like that. Um, and so that's obviously, um, as you're getting more in depth in your game, you're going to want to add those sort of error checking elements to your game. Likewise, the other thing that um, I've run into a number of times in these videos, and as, as I'm sure you've seen, is that when we when we're playing the game, um, for example, we go to this table, and now we want to go back, and there is a node somewhere in this room, but you don't know where it is that you can um, interact with it. If I turn on gizmos, you and I click on the room, you can suddenly see, oh, it's right here in the middle, but it's not really obvious. Um, it would be a lot better if this level were better designed, and which isn't to say that this structure doesn't work, but we're, right now we're not telling our player a lot of things. Um, it's kind of like how when we originally had the switcher, but it never reacted in any way that the player could tell. Um, so in our next video, which will be the last video in this series, I'm going to talk about um, some elements of good game design and um, the ideas of kind of feedback and affordances and how you can help your player kind of in, just inherently know what they should be doing in your game. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.